Welcome everyone. So today we're going to be talking about Kafka and AWS S3, how it's a great match. Uh, we think it enables a lot of use cases and the ability to share data between the two. Because while this is a great match, we think that there, it comes with its own challenges and we hope to convince you today that a great way of solving that, sharing data with, between Kafka and S3, is thanks to a powerful combo of the S3 connectors from Lenses I.O. with a combination of AWS MSK Connect. So I'm Adamos, I'm the product manager with Lenses I.O. and I'm here with Mustafa from Yep, AWS Streaming, and we're gonna talk about sharing data between Kafka and S3. So before we dive in, just to talk a little bit about who we are at Lenses I.O., we've been since 2018, and we are the leading developer experience for Apache Kafka. That means it's a tool suite and a very powerful UI that allows you to do uh, data observability, operations, and governance so that you can work very effectively with Kafka, whether you're a streaming developer or a uh, platform Kafka engineer. Um, as part of that work, it so happens that we ended up becoming one of the biggest contributors of open source connectors. And then you're gonna see how this work is feeding into today's talk with our S3 connectors. Um, right, and one final note is that our main uh, use cases and clientele is mainly large enterprise because that's where you really get to see Kafka used in anger at scale. So that's where the sort of governance and really powerful experience takes place. But let's move now into our problem space. And let's talk about integrating Kafka data with S3. Um, so S3 is a big kitchen sink in the sense that it enables so many use cases by just offering uh, data there. Uh, but as it turns out, there can be some challenges when trying to do that with Kafka sharing data to S3. So what we've done here is we've picked the sort of four of the most common patterns that we've seen of people needing to send uh, data to S3 from Kafka and the challenges that you might face. So first off, uh, one of the most common use cases of sending uh, Kafka data to S3 is as a backup. Basically, whether you wanna keep your retention low and save on costs or whether because you wanna be able to restore things, have disaster recovery strategy, you just wanna keep a backup of your topic data. Um, but of course, in order to do that, you have to figure out how do you store the messages in uh, S3 so that you capture as much as possible of what was done in that message, as in not just the key and the value, but also headers and the Kafka metadata. Think of partition, uh, offset information, timestamp, because if you're gonna restore it, you need all that information. Another pattern, of course, is shipping data from Kafka to S3 in order to hydrate your data lake. Uh, this is a very classic scenario. You ship files and uh, you drive your Athena with glue or your Databricks or Apache Spark. But then the problem that you need to solve is actually it's not enough to just store one message per file because if you're gonna do big data analysis, you need to pile them together and maybe store them in a different format like Parquet. So a different set of problems. And then finally we have another two patterns that are mostly around integrating systems and apps that are not native to Kafka for various reasons. So on the one side, you might be sourcing data from systems to Kafka through S3, maybe because they're legacy and you can't, it's too hard to come up with a native integration directly as a producer, or maybe because it's an external system or a very rigid system. So what you end up seeing is um, teams and departments will export files to S3, they will show you a bucket, and then somehow you need to bring that into S3. But more often than not, that means that the files, their formats, they might be XML, custom formats, proprietary, multi-line. So how can you easily source that into Kafka without writing custom apps? And on the other side of consuming, well, um, well ideally we would want all our apps to be event-driven and tap directly into Kafka. In practice, you see more pragmatic approaches. Uh, it's much easier for a data scientist to spin up a Jupyter notebook and point to an S3 bucket than trying to think about uh, consuming directly from a topic. So again, you see patterns of people wanting to export to S3 to be able to drive all kinds of apps from that point on uh, by just tapping into S3. And the question then is how can you do that continuously without in introducing it too much of a latency? So for all these problems, you see that having a one-all fit solution is not very trivial. And at the same time, whatever you come up with needs to be enterprise grade because it needs to work. 
It needs to be cost efficient, because at the end of the day, that's the whole point of S3, giving you a scalable, cost efficient way of storing stuff. And then finally, it should avoid locking you in into a vendor. Because if, it's gonna, if you're going to use it as such a foundational integration uh, pattern of shifting data between Kafka and S3, you want to sh be sure that you're not locked in uh, and you have it under control. So what's the solution then? We're going to propose a solution that leverages the power of two great things. One is the power of MSK from AWS and MSK Connect that manages connectors. And the other thing is the S3 connectors from lenses. And over to Mustafa. So when you look at moving data from Kafka to your data lake S3, you have a couple of options when it comes to how you manage your Kafka. AWS has a couple of flavors, and I will go through some of them today. First one is Amazon MSK. This is a provisioned flavor for uh, Amazon MSK. It's a fully managed service, fully compatible with your Kafka uh, workloads. Uh, you can lift and shift. You can keep your same integrations, connectors, APIs, and use them with Amazon MSK. It, uh, Amazon MSK is uh, highly available. By default, it comes across three different AZs. And it's uh, highly secure. Same authentication and authorization mechanisms that you have with Kafka. But in addition, we also have uh, VPC private link support. So you can connect your applications to your Kafka clusters through private link and VPC private connectivity. In addition, uh, since it's a fully managed service, it takes care of the provisioning, installation, uh, patches, all the heavy lifting that you do with self-managed Kafka. Our customers told us when they use Amazon MSK, their average cost is much lower, around 60%, compared to other providers. So that's something to consider, uh, looking at the Kafka solution and the total cost that you have. Another option is MSK serverless. So that's the second flavor from AWS on how you manage your Kafka. It's a serverless, so you don't have to worry about I.O. provisioning, over-provisioning sometimes, uh, reassigning partitions. It's a serverless in nature, so it takes care of scaling up and down your workloads, and you only pay for the data volume. So you don't have to worry about what happens when I have a spike in my data volume. If there is a seasonality, I'm launching new products. Typically, customers go and provision for the max peak value. But with serverless, you ingest data as much as you want with the data volume that you're looking for, and you only get to pay for the data volume. And the serverless will take care of the scaling and uh, the provisioning in the, in the back end. And MSK Connect, um, it's another fully managed service from AWS. MSK Connect is considered a feature of Amazon MSK. Fully compatible with Kafka Connect, so the same connectors that you use to deploy. When you migrate, you can use the same connectors, same APIs. Uh, it scales up and down, so it automatically uh, supports auto-scale for you. And you pay only for the resources that you use. And of course, one of these connectors will be the lenses connector to deliver to S3. One of the uh, key ingredients, uh, let me see what's happened here. Hmm. All right, so I think we have some issue with our slides. Give me one sec. Uh, hmm. All right, no worries, I'll talk through it. Does this work? No. There we go. Okay, so uh, that's the one ingredient, which is the power of MSK, a managed Kafka, and as well a managed Kafka Connect, which allows you basically to use the de facto standard for integrating Kafka with other data systems. So all that is missing now as an ingredient is a connector that knows how to talk to S3. So this is when Lenses comes in. It introduces two connectors, both a source and a sync connector. Uh, and they're completely open source, which means that they're available to use today, free. And at the same time, they work with uh, MSK Connect so that you can be sure that the combination works. And uh, optionally, if you're gonna use it in, for production loads, for critical systems, you can also get enterprise support. Because the idea for our S3 connectors is that we want you to use them, uh, we want to increase adoption, 
but also have the peace of mind that if you need support, you have somebody backing it, uh, fixing issues, driving a roadmap. So let's talk now about the features of this connector that enables you to uh, fulfill all these use cases and the patterns that we saw. So at the core of this connector lies what we call the envelope format. Because if you remember, the very first use case was how to achieve backup and restore, how you need to capture the full context of your message, not just the key and the value. So this structure that we call the envelope is designed effectively to support that. So by default, our S3 connectors, and both of them, they're symmetric, manage to capture the key, the value, any headers, and all of the metadata of your Kafka, you know, your offset, your partition, your timestamp. And, and you can ship that to S3. And by allowing both the sync and the source to understand this format means you can achieve full symmetry of backing something up to S3, coming back later in a month or a year, whenever you choose, and you can restore it back to your Kafka or even to a different Kafka because both understand this format. So that really enables the backup and restore. But there's a lot more. We've actually packed a whole lot of features into our uh, connectors that it would take an hour to go through, but I'm just going to mention a few things just so that you have them in your mind. First of all, both source and sync support multiple uh, formats, whether it's you want to source or sync Avro, text, CSV, XML, Parquet. There's tons of uh, functionality and uh, flexibility there so that you can serve both event-driven uh, use cases, but also more uh, analytics-oriented with columnar parquet. Think of driving your Athena, for example. At the same time, our source has the ability to deal with a lot of unstructured data, especially when dealing with proprietary formats and legacy systems. You have no control to massage them into a JSON or Avro. Well, with the source, you don't need to write code. You can just configure it, and it can very quickly understand multi-line uh, events or things that have a beginning and end tags. So it's very flexible. And again, with zero code. At the same time, because it leverages Kafka Connect and MSK Kafka Connect, they're both very scalable. They leverage the task system of uh, Kafka Connect, but also they scale based on the directories that they find when sourcing. And it, at the same time, it can do even dynamic discovery of directories. So depending on how you configure it, you can say, well, I'm partitioning my source based on country folders. If a, a new country folder appears, the source connector will automatically pick it up and source it correctly. And finally, on the source, it's extremely reliable. It actually keeps track of what it has published to Kafka. So even if you stop it or something crashes, something goes wrong, it will actually resume from the exact place that it stopped. And we're talking within a file, an, uh, an event, not just um, a whole file that it has to reprocess the file. It actually picks up from where it left off from within the file. And of course, it can achieve exactly once semantics, um, utilizing the latest version of Kafka Connect, which means that you can really um, use this with, with very strong guarantees. On the sync side, we've talked again about formats. We have implemented some extremely flexible partitioning starting from the native Kafka, which is great for uh, backing up. Basically, it will reflect your partitions. Let's say you have a topic of 10 partitions. It will create separate folders for each partition, so it's very easy then to uh, bring that back. Uh, but you can also do based on content. Uh, for example, you might want to ship to Athena or to Apache Spark, and you want to restructure repartition by a value, a field in your uh, message, maybe a country. So it will pick that value and it will start creating folders in your S3 based on that value. So country US, country UK. It will also do time-based rolling. So you can uh, decide maybe you want to do end of day batching of your data. And of course, you have full tuning of uh, when you flush, when you create the, the files, whether you want by space every 100 meg or by time every few seconds or both. Uh, because of all this flexibility, it's very easy to effectively sync to S3 in an Athena and Glue native way so that it, the structure of the path will be able to represent the partitions for Athena to do the querying in a more efficient way. And again, it's reliable. It can recover from crashes because it keeps track of what it has published to S3, and it can achieve exactly once. So there's a lot more, and feel free to come to our booth uh, to talk more about it. But yeah, just to wrap it up, by just introducing this symmetric uh, source and sync connectors, we have achieved an architectural pattern that allows you for a dual way of communicating between Kafka and S3. 
So whatever you want to send from Kafka to S3, you can easily break back in. And that enables you uh, for use cases like backup and restore, of course. And you take that a step further, that could start feeding into your disaster recovery strategy rather than needing uh, an active, active Kafka that can be very expensive. Maybe it's okay to have a uh, backup in your S3 that you can uh, source back into a, a recovery passive um, Kafka. At the same time, because of the way that you can structure the output that can be parquet-based, differently partitioned, you can very easily feed your data lake, uh, you can feed AI models, you can bring in non-Kafka apps by directly linking to uh, S3, and we've done some tests, and actually you can see the sort of latency in terms of uh, seconds, which sometimes with uh, apps that do not need to be very real-time but more reactive, that works fine rather than having to onboard them directly with Kafka. And of course, uh, with S3 being a kitchen sink, the moment you land something to S3, it's open to be used by any other AWS service. Uh, and don't take our word for it. Uh, actually, we've been developing these connectors in partnership with some of our large enterprise customers, and this is an example. And Samsung actually have been using this, uh, battle testing it, uh, exactly for backing up and restoring topics, but also hydrating their analytics uh, pipelines, uh, their big data pipelines. So with all that in mind, what are the next steps? Well, easy, go and try it out. Again, it's open source, it's freely available, both the source and the sync, and they're completely symmetric. Uh, go to our GitHub page, you can have access to both the connectors. But if you want to learn more, well, first come and talk to us through our booth, but then we have a dedicated page for our S3. Any questions you have, you can ask our community or speak to us directly on Slack. And of course, you can head over to MSK for some great classes for both MSK and MSK Connect and some labs and tutorials as well. And with that in mind, I'd like to thank you.